and your wife are for participating in this interview. Thank you. It's, it's our pleasure. And uh, I first want to say that I, I thank you for the sacrifice that you've given us. Well, well thank you. And um, this is a, uh, an amazing story. At the, at the same time, I do believe God is going to be glorified through this movie and through the efforts that you guys are putting forward. That's, that's our hope. We, <laughs> we certainly hope so. Yes, and your son will be honored and everybody will know his story. Can you tell us, Terry, uh, can you tell me, um, just a minute here, let me get my recorder cor correct, okay? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, hold on just a minute. So, Terry, can you tell us, um, uh, I'm calling, my, my the name of my magazine is called Inside to Pew. Yes, sir. And uh, we're a Christian online news magazine, and I also have uh, two internet radio stations, uh, one is called Inside, I mean, Pew Talk Radio, and the other one is called uh, WPTR. Okay? Okay, yes, sir. And probably what we're going to do, we're going to run the story on on Inside the Pew and probably uh, put part of the interview of, of the audio on, on the air as well, okay? Okay, uh, yeah, let me know if I need to or lower or whatever I need to do. Okay, right now you're just fine. You're just fine. All right, good. Okay, now I, I have a question. You know, this this movie will be coming out, and it's called The Harness Nest, and it will be coming out on um, June 9th, 2014, all over the country. And uh, I'm looking forward to the movie. I've seen some trails of the movie. I've seen some photos of the movie. I've actually seen a very very nice photo of you and your son uh that was sent to me and um i'm uh thank you uh, i just want to say thank you guys thank you well thank you thank you for uh <laughs> it's difficult but thank you uh, and i'm sure it is can you tell us a little bit about your son oh gosh yes <laughs> uh, let's see what i like to say is what what I remember about him the most is he was definitely the all-American boy from a very young age. You know, he was very sports-oriented. He loved playing soccer. I think he started playing soccer when he was four or five. Uh, from there, he went on to Little League Baseball. He played uh, football from, oh gosh, from young age up up into high school. So very sports oriented. Uh, I remember he loved to climb trees out where we lived there in Pecan Valley. He loved to climb trees and then, uh, of course, he loved to fall out of trees. <laughs> so that worried us a little bit. Uh, he has a younger sister. Her name is Brandy. B R A N D I. Okay. Uh, he, he just loved dearly protected dearly. I think they they kind of protected each other depending on which way the wind blew. But, uh, wow. And he was always he was always very protective of his sister. I saw that very early on. He uh, you know, he's that mean older brother that wouldn't let her date. Wow. <laughs> when did your son decide uh, how did how happened that he decided to go into the military? Uh, he had always been had that kind of mindset. He at an early age he wanted to join the police force. You know he wanted to be a fireman. Uh, he actually joined National Guard right out of high school, and then immediately after that it was nine eleven, and so he decided he was going to fight back for real, and. Uh, I, I tell people he wasn't asking me, he was telling me. And uh, in fact, he had already joined the Army. Wow. So, so that part of me, I was very, very proud of him for that. But, um, 
Wow. So very, but also very, you know, very anxious. Anxious. And very, kind of scared because we didn't have a lot of military background in the family. So, yeah, it's kind of unknown. And he was going straight into boot camp while we were at war. So we, we knew he was going to get deployed very shortly after that. Wow. I can imagine uh, as parents... Uh, that what was going through you guys' mind when when that happened? I mean, that was a very touchy situation for the two of you, correct? Correct, it was. It, it was that thing. You know, you want your children to do the right thing. You want them to make awesome decisions. But that was a very very high price to pay for that decision. Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how to put that into words. I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, uh, and we knew when when he joined the army, when he went to boot camp, that he was going into the infantry. So we knew he was going to be right there out front. Yeah, he was going to be at the pointy end of the spear. <laughs> so he knew this also going in, am I correct? Yes, yes, sir. He went in fully knowing what he was going to be up against. And he was ready. He was very prepared. So I can imagine um, the talk that y'all had the, the, before he went in. I mean, I, I can imagine that was a very serious sit-down talk between the three of you guys. Am I correct? Yes, sir, it was. And uh, he was just so committed to it. Uh, you know, his patriotism had always been very visible. He was very patriotic, very American, and it had... 9-11 really hurt him. It really upset him. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know if more than the average American, but quite a bit. Can I talk about his faith in God and what role God played in his life at that time? Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. He grew up in a, a small church town. He grew up in Cleburne. We were a church family. We went regularly. Uh, I was a Sunday school teacher. I was song leader. So Brian had a very strong faith background. And he stayed with the church, oh, long after he grew up. Yeah. Uh, so his faith and, and the Spirit carried him where he needed to be, and, and he followed it. Wow. Wow. And a lot of his commanding officers, uh, they actually saw that in him. They, uh, they have, they've come to me later and told me. They said, you know, we had our eyes on Burgess because he had the family connection, he had the spiritual connection, and he had the love for his men for the Army. And they said that's what they look for in leaders. And I would have never, ever guessed that about Brian. He graduated boot camp, and before we knew it, he was uh, private first class, and then he was sergeant, and then uh, he was staff sergeant. He was he was climbing fast, and uh, the more men we talked to, you know, we found out they loved him. They they said we would have followed Sergeant Burgess into hell, and they did. <laughs> My uh, goodness, can can we talk about? Um, Terry, Mr. Burgess, about that uh, that particular battle and that scene, what happened um, from from your perspective or what you gathered? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, uh, after we got notified about Brian's death, we had the, the official Army reports were delivered to us in a sealed envelope and they are still sealed to this day. I took them and I literally threw them into his trunk. I didn't want to read them. I didn't want to see them. I didn't want to think about it. Uh, and then the hornet's nest comes to us and I'm not only knowing what happened, I'm actually seeing it and hearing it. I, the, you can hear the radio calls. You can uh, see the man that was standing right there beside him, a uh, private Cadillac was standing right there with Brian when it happened, and he gives his account of it. Wow. So it was, uh, it was a 
very vivid coming to grips with what happened. And it, it literally was an ambush. It was very unexpected. They didn't know that the Taliban was there in that certain part of the valley. They knew the Taliban was there in the valley. That was the reason they were there. But for these, for the Taliban to be up in the trees above the path that the American soldiers were taking and just firing straight down on the soldiers, uh, the Taliban knew it was a suicide mission, which, you know, uh, they have no value for human life at all. So they really didn't care. But it caught Brian and his men in a very bad place. Uh, Brian was hit uh, several places. Uh, he was a left-handed shooter, and he was hit in his left hand, so that disarmed him, and then he was hit in his leg, you know, before he could really do anything, and his men had already taken up positions and were firing straight up into the trees, but uh, Brian had already been hit. Wow. And, yeah, and, and you, uh, you hear this in the movie. Uh, you will hear it in the hornet's nest. Can can I ask you? And I can imagine it took it takes a lot of strength for the two of you guys to even talk about this. And I I just want to ask you where is it coming from? Where's the strength to see this movie and to hear it? How do you how do you cope with this? What transformation has taken place in you all's lives? That's a, that's a very good question because uh, I was laid off. I was already laid off from a job whenever uh, Brian was killed. And I, can I tell you about the dream that I had about him? Because uh, this is definitely where my strength came from. Sure you can. Uh the dream I had about Brian was we were walking along a dusty, rocky road. He was in full battle gear. He had on his, his helmet, his pack, his rifle, everything. And he was talking to me, but I couldn't hear him. It was, it was like total silence. So he guided me around the corner and I uh, found myself in an outdoor movie theater. And Brian sat down to my right, and there on the screen was Brian dressed in his full battle gear and he was standing beside a glass coffin. So he stepped into the coffin, he laid down, and as soon as his helmet touched the satin pillow, he turned into little boy Brian. Uh, he lay there for a minute, little boy Brian got out of the casket, and he became warrior Brian again. And uh, warrior Brian gave me a little half salute and a smile, and then the screen just went blindingly white. And I looked over to my right at Brian, and he was gone. And at that point, I woke up. And I was going into Beth's office to tell her about the weird dream I just had. And she's on the phone, and she's crying, and she hands me the phone, and it's my daughter-in-law, Tiffany. And she's crying hysterically that Brian had been killed in action that morning. Wow. So you mean you had this dream the morning you got the call? Yes, sir. The morning, just right before I got the call. And uh, so Brian's visitation was telling me, you know, he was preparing me, saying, don't mourn the loss of little boy Brian, because that, that little boy died when Brian became a soldier. That innocence died when Brian went to war and became a man. And he's telling me, you know, celebrate the man, celebrate the life, honor the warrior. And uh, it, it took me a while to realize that, Graylin, it, it really did. Uh, like I said, I was laid off at the time, and then getting the news that Brian was killed, it just, it shattered me. It, it yanked the rug out from under me, and my life was just shattered. Uh, Thankfully, we had the CAO, the casualty assistance officer, had come and literally took us by the hand, took us where we needed to be, took us to Dover for the dignified transfer when the boys uh, came home for the last time. Uh, 
Uh, we had we had him. It was uh, Sergeant Rose was our officer. Uh, drove us to the airport, helped us get through the airport. Uh, just, I, I mean, literally took us by the hand because I was a wreck. Uh, we went to Brian's funeral. We went to the memorial services. Uh, we had the folded flag, and we came home. Uh, Brian had chosen to be cremated, so I had a small urn. He picked out a, a golf bag urn for me. He loved the golf. Uh, we were both terrible at it, but loved it. <laughs> to live. 
live for. I have a reason to honor Brian. This is how I can honor him. This is how I can share his spirit and and tell his story. So I started getting out of bed in the mornings. I started shaving. I started, you know, I got dressed. I got cleaned up. Stopped drinking. Stopped taking pills. Got in touch with the producers and asking them, you know, what can I do to help? And uh, so they started inviting us to go to screenings. They were doing free screenings across the country. And so Beth and I attended one, and we were at, at uh, one screening, and Christian Trow, the executive producer, invited me up on stage to talk. And I had no idea that was going to happen. <laughs> and, and he asked me, just, you know, just speak from your heart. So I did, and I started talking about what the film meant to me as the gold star dad, you know, as a, as a father whose son was sacrificed, as a, as a spiritual person who was nearly crushed, that uh, it's turned into a very good thing. We've attended 26 of the screenings, and I believe I've talked at most of them. I've, uh, it helped make the film real for the audience. They can look at me and after seeing the film and say, wow, this really happened. This is not just a movie. This really happened to this guy. And yet here he is standing up there bravely talking to us. Can you, can you see the spiritual miracle that God done and created through you guys? I believe we can. Yes. I think we can because one of the things that, that happened to no one's fault is, you know, you're so busy that first year because you're busy with the paperwork. You're busy traveling to the memorials and traveling to the funeral. And then you get home and it's just the two of us. And everyone else seems to have gone on with their lives and, and we're looking at each other going, well, what, okay, what what do we do now? And you're thinking, and, and literally thinking, oh God, how do we get through the rest of our lives? How do we do this? For forever carry this pain and so looking back now I think maybe the film might have been an answer maybe to a prayer that I didn't even know I'd done that's correct I'm just trying to figure out how am I going to carry carry for you know because I you know I cannot ask anything of him anymore because he lost his son so it's up to me I have to be the strong one I have to carry it how am I going to do that I can't do that by myself. So, uh, I, that, I mean, that kind of was, that's kind of the way I feel about the film. God answered your prayers, and God put you two on a higher level spiritually. This is amazing, and, huh? Yeah, and, and put us on a on a path where we know now. We know what, what our mission is. We know what we're going to do. We know what, what happens next, and, and we know we know where we're going, and we know that all of it is to honor Brian. Amen. So truly, God answered your prayers, and he healed you at the same time. Isn't that beautiful? It is. And it, it, it continues. It's still been going on, because now we communicate with other Gold Star families. We know how to talk to new Gold Star families. Uh, we know what not to say to them, uh, we know what to say to them. We know how to give them comfort. Uh, nobody in our families knew how to treat us. They didn't know what to say. They sure didn't know when to say it. But uh, it's, it's uh, raised our awareness of how to communicate actually to anyone that's lost a child. My, my own aunt lost a son a few years back I didn't know how to talk to her now I do I know how to speak with her well Terry I can say this much you know God truly loved you because he took you from going through what you were going through from one end and he established you and made you an ambassador of this <laughs> yeah. We, yeah we are Terry is now the, the ambassador for for gold Star dad. I appreciate that. I really do. Man, that is a testimony. Spiritually and, and, and just for being a father. 
that this is an amazing story. God has really, the spiritual side of it, God has really connected even to have the producers come to you. All this was God. This was God's hands all in this. I truly believe that. And, and the good thing is the producers believe that too. And I've told them that. I've, I've talked to Mike Fetcher and Carlos. They're the ones that actually did the film there in Afghanistan. And I told Mike, I said, you risked your life to save mine. You, you really have. He felt uh, his son Carlos was with him there in Afghanistan. And Mike said, you know, I can't do this. I can't watch out for myself and worry about you. So he actually sent Carlos home. He let him be there for a year and then sent him home. And then Mike has to go on this last mission and these six men are killed. And he knows every one of these men have a father. They have a mother. Some of them, Brian had a wife and two kids. So it was, uh, it was really hard on Mike and he was very trepidatious about bringing it back. Uh, not knowing how the Gold Star Dads were going to treat him, but uh, it, 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 it's a gift for us, and that's how I treated it. And my first time we met, we just hugged like we were family, and I felt like we were. A lot of Brian's men have come up and talked to us, and where they won't even talk to their own spouse or their own family, they will talk to me and Beth because they have that spiritual connection. Yes. So yes. it's really allowed us to to try to then to reach out and and begin to help as much as we can, you know, other the soldiers, of other families, you know, just this, okay. So this is this is our mission now. This is what we do. It's our mission now to help other people. And well, I don't think we could have, we could have done it without. I could not have done it otherwise. I'm not on our own. This is amazing. God has truly blessed you guys. And you know what? You will see your son again. Oh, absolutely. I'm a firm believer in that. Amen. And Mrs. Burgess, you stick by your husband. This is beautiful. Well, thank you. That that was one of the other almost, I won't say casualties, but it, it, it was a struggle because you know, you get to that same point and you get home and there's not really anything left to talk about. Everything is so trivial. Everything is so trivial. I can't talk to him about work <laughs> because it's so trivial. So, and there's only one thing you really want to talk about, but it's too painful. So you just stop talking to each other because what have we got left to say? I, we don't have anything left. I had the TV shut off. We don't have cable or satellite or anything. We had that completely shut off. Uh, we'd go home at the end of the day and just lock ourselves in. You know, and beyond, you know, just, you know, the superficial, we really didn't have a lot to say to each other for a while, so, so you know, it gave us, it, it gave us a connection as well, and it gave us something then to begin, you know, to kind of get back to each other. Correct, because from the beginning, it was a, a, I'm sure it created a strain on the marriage. Very, very much so. Wow. And then God mended your hearts and mended your marriage. Oh my God, that's a blessing. Yeah, it really is. And, and we've talked to other other families as well, you know, and we've all talked about it either fractures your marriage and it's over or you get closer. And there doesn't seem to be anything in between. And you, you have that choice to make. As a family, you have that choice to make. You can either let it the fracture you or you can take the spirit and let it strengthen you and I'm, I'm glad we let it strengthen us amen amen this is an amazing story Terry I'm sure you guys are going to write a book pretty soon right <laughs> we're talking about it <laughs> trying to talk to me go ahead I'm listening uh oh <laughs> oh pause Yes, I'm here. I'm, I'm sorry, my quarter ran out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you guys are going to write that book, right? We're, we're talking about it. Yeah, she, she's going to let me. Amen. Amen. And yeah. and Terry, um, I would love to get you guys on the radio. Uh, man, have you ever thought about a radio show, Terry? No, no sir, I haven't, no. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to make him that offer. You sure you don't want to talk on a radio show? <laughs> I, I would be honored to talk on the radio. Well, I tell you, I'm going to get back with you next week on that, and let's see what we can do. Okay, okay. that would be great. That would be great. Well, well, thank you for that. Okay, I will definitely call you next week. Okay. And may God bless you all, and thank you very much. Grayland, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. all right. Thank you very much, Grayland. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right. Bye.